This is the next part of rock and roll <laughs> grandma. Um, in uh, Canada, we have a uh, uh, architect philosopher. He uh, came up with the phrase that went worldwide, which was uh, the medium is the message. And in the last 12 and a half hours, <laughs> I realized that uh, uh, the message is uh, the music. For uh, since 2014, I've been personally railing against a cadre of uh, New Age people who are metaphorically dancing around Stonehenge and saying we're going to ascend to the next density. So. Uh, Having been to some esoteric schools, you don't ascend without doing some work or at least concentrating your attention on something. Um, maybe six years ago, I was dialed, I'm in Canada, I was dialed into a US radio station and they were playing rock and roll and they were playing a bunch of great inspiring songs that I haven't heard for years because they're not allowed on the radio stations in Canada because we're a socialist country and there is um, what I'm heading to there is a suppression of anything that would lead to higher consciousness or feeling good and this is based on uh, I was talking to a candidate last night and he was being interviewed by a very smart woman uh, who wouldn't take uh, a vague answer. She nailed him down on several points and he said you can't nail me down on this point unless you're willing to listen to the entire explanation. So she would listen to the entire explanation and say okay next thing. And when we wind up talking about voter suppression which sounds bad when you're suppressing the voters. Uh, almost all the elections in the West are 50, 49, 50, 51 percent. There's just, uh, they're so close and they say, oh, mankind is divided. This is a bad thing. And uh, a lot of young people say, I don't vote because what's the use? Both sides are crooked. You're just voting for the lesser of two evils. This is what voter suppression really is. This uh, zeitgeist thought that was... It, it, Everyone's crooked and there's no use. I can't do anything. And this candidate was saying, look at the boats here. He had the actual numbers uh, down like, you know, 49,221. And this guy, guy who got on got 49,236. He said if just a few of the young people who don't vote or, or the old people who don't vote had come out and voted, it could have changed the election either way. So it is essential that you uh, you vote. And then the young lady said, well, we don't know what's going on. And then the candidate said, well, it's, it's your uh, obligation to find out what's going on because it does affect your life. And uh, he said, uh, we're the smallest municipality here, yet we have the highest tax rate. Where's the money going? Couldn't get an answer from uh, city council. So he immediately put an accountant on his ticket. Um, so uh, I think the medium for higher consciousness and ascending to the next density is uh, music when it was raised to the level of the electromagnetic spectrum when we got the uh, electric guitar pickup the electromagnetic Hammond organ the vacuum tube which gave us amplifiers or radio radio broadcasts and then television and now direct cable which is where, where my videos are on on YouTube so this is the uh, the medium by which we will ascend to the next level and they who 
who don't want us to do that are trying to suppress it. This started when the uh, the church had control of the big uh, organs in the churches and had the funds to fund the composers and say you can't can't use uh, minor chords. Uh, it has to be uplifting. Um, <laughs> I'll bet you, as an aside, in the the bars. I'll bet you there was people with guitars and violins uh, singing raunchy songs and being basically rock and roll happy music for people. We'll never know because nothing was recorded of that. So we had a uh, classical music used to be called Baroque, which is a very sweet sounding tonic music. Everything's in time and in tune and there's a billion pieces of it. Then the Romantic era came in when uh, musicians, genius composers, saying, you know, we could use this music to create emotions and manipulate people's emotions and and uh, give moods. And that was um, resisted by the uh, the church and the classicists and the uh, Baroque people. There were actually fistfights and riots at concerts. When people were like, uh, the only name that comes to mind is Claude Debussy and Claire de Lune and other things, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, uh, gives, it gives a mood. Well, that was resisted. We need people in that was the time of, you need the peasants to go and toil in the fields and hoe cabbages so uh, we can eat for free on the toll of their labor. Um, closer to the modern era, uh, the music from the South, uh, the combo music of the Irish and uh, black people from Africa was uh, creating the American folk music was, was resisted by radio stations. They called it race music and they wouldn't play it. And uh, musicians by the main, hopefully, <laughs> were less racially prejudiced than other people. And they said, well, this is great stuff. This is fantastic. I want to do this and show it to people. So there's resistance on the radio stations with the electromagnetic spectrum. This stuff has to be kept away from the worker bees. Um, the Soviet Union uh, didn't allow rock and roll. to be uh, imported into their country because they said it was delusional uh, as was uh, religion. They said religion is the opiate of the masses. People need to uh, face up to their responsibilities, go to work, build the state. Um, <clears throat> there was an uh, American uh, army, I think the army did this, a group of radio stations surrounding Western Russia, and they had this thing called Radio Free Europe, where they would broadcast rock and roll music and their democratic ideas into Russia. Uh, in uh, I went to uh, the Netherlands in 1968, I think. The rock, I was in a rock band. Uh, at that time, <coughs> the BBC would not play rock and roll music on the radio. And there were two uh, pirate radio stations on ships in the English Channel between the Netherlands and Britain. It was Radio Veronica and Radio Caroline, and they were playing rock and roll. And they couldn't be stopped because they were in international waters. I know they were raided a few times. 
And there's a marvelous documentary on YouTube about that and them. So we got there and uh, found this out and said, hey, you, you're not allowed to hear rock and roll on the radio, but we all listen to Radio Caroline and Radio Veronica. So again, trying to keep this stuff away from people, not because it was actually bad for them, but it was actually bad for the masters. And uh, one of the prime examples of what they don't want is if you look at uh, Ted Nugent and his self-confidence and maleness and <laughs> rock and roll uh, attitudes. And his, he has that song called Hey Baby, which check that out, which is um, the energy of young males. That's... Uh, not wanted by them and what he said <laughs> is basically there's a lot of wimps out there wimps don't like that and they're afraid of it so um i think i think that the um the change will be and has been caused by music being raised up into the electromagnetic spectrum. This is the mechanism by which we will ascend to the next density. And uh, for example, <laughs> NASA sent a satellite out into interstellar space and there's a gold record in it and uh, it's literally a record. Uh, and uh, one of the things that's on it is I uh, can't get no satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and uh, there's an old joke, I guess it's probably, I don't know, 40, 50 year old joke, that we got a response from the aliens and they said, what is the response? And it was like, send more rock and roll. So lately, the uh, the ooh and ah about uh, rock and roll has been uh, dissipated into uh, rap and the new rhythm and blues. Then, uh, <laughs> not your father's rhythm and blues, and that's very um, very corporate. There's an old Neil Young album called After the Gold Rush, which is sort of a commentary on rock and roll it used to be pure. It was actual people doing it. And then there was, uh, found out how much money there was in it. So it became a business. And the first two people who got hit with that were Frank Sinatra. I was able to record albums. And then Elvis, uh, a prototype of the uh, pop star rocker. Massive amounts of money. So what I wanted to talk about yesterday, and I forgot my list, was um, this was kept pure by a small group of people. So we have uh, Every year, a hundred songs that make it to the very top from 1957, which is, is the year. Uh, things are good till 63, and that's when corporate rock hit. So through these hundreds of songs, there's a small group of people who carried this movement. The, um, it's an American philosopher who <laughs> said the civilization runs on the back of a few desperate men and their strong voices in the land. 
So I'm going to list these people uh, that I found is um, Elvis, Bill Haley, Paul Anka, Big Joe Turner, the Rolling Stones, who kept it real the whole way through, uh, Little Richard, Muddy Waters, the Beach Boys, uh, Hound Dog Taylor, Beatles, of course, Bob Seger, The Doors, Bobby Gentry, Stevie Wonder, Creedence Clearwater, arrived in the middle of all the corporate rock, which is why they were so uh, popular. I One of the commentators on them said it's been a long time since people went for the sound of a band. Queen, Young Rascals, and you too. I was in a high tech duo when you uh, you two came out, and my partner said you you got to come and see this. And I, I they were on a video. I said that that's real. These guys, this is a real band. <laughs> and two months later, they're still going. Bob Dylan on that list? Early Bob Dylan? And Little Richard, who says he's the architect of uh, rock and roll, credits Lloyd Price with turning him on to the fact that you could do that. <laughs> um, I played uh, music from 1964 until 1992, and in the middle of the corporate rock era, I uh, surveyed my audience as I looked up all the, the top songs from the entire time of my lifetime, put them on a survey and passed them out to people and said, which ones do you want to hear? And that was my song list, and uh, this is what I got for response. So I uh, realized this didn't work, so I went, okay. Then I'm just going to play the music that I like and believe in and uh, let the chips fall where they may. And then the response was people would come over and give me tips and say, are you here all the time? So being genuine communicates and uh, statistics don't communicate. And corporate rock uses statistics, lowest common denominator. So the, um, in my opinion, the real, in quotation marks, musicians have carried this movement through into the electronic era. And this is the force or medium by which mankind will ascend to the next density. <laughs> Hopefully where you're less dense. Uh, connected to this is uh, the uh, anti-segregation movement and the music of Motown. Uh, I think that this is a critical, critical, critical bunch of music. It's still popular today. <laughs> and it uh, allowed um, Caucasians who were not racially prejudiced to see that the American, African American Negroes were not second class citizens. Now, I majored in history in uh, university, and it is a fact that every race on this planet has at one time enslaved the other races spread out across history. So no one's innocent. Uh, we're only uh, a couple hundred years away from that. I think we're so cool, but it could all be gone.
like that. One big volcano and, uh, or uh, asteroid hit and it would all land. There's, um, <laughs> um, now seven major races on the planet, and they're all Homo sapiens. There's been 54 other brands of humans throughout history, and they've gone extinct for various reasons. I'll just give you an example of one kind of reason. The Neanderthals had bigger brains than us, so theoretically smarter, but smarter also requires more energy to uh, run it and they had bigger bodies which requires more fuel and they were around in the ice age when they, when food was scarce plus bigger heads on babies means more women die in childbirth so now we have slightly smaller skulls and uh, the final product right now is homo sapiens there's seven different races and some people say they races are color coded because now the um, valuable final product is which one of them will come out on top and that we are being farmed by someone unseen uh, someone asked peter spensky once uh, what is the the smartest animal and he said that which no man has seen Plus many other things. So I think the Doobie Brothers uh, said it best when they said, listen to the music. Imagine if there was no music, no radio, no. Uh, iPods, no thumb drives, no CDs, no cassettes, no vinyl, no Edison wax reels. So, uh, <laughs> in conclusion, it's been a long haul the last 300 years to uh, get music onto the um, electromagnetic spectrum. And I, I think we've been noticed now that we've put stuff out in the electromagnetic spectrum that beings that we can't see with our 3D perceptions designed for planet Earth who've been trying to help us for a long time now can talk back to us through artists. Like uh, the Beatles, Bob Dylan and Robbie Robertson. Surprisingly. And uh, I go to a lot of uh, open mic session sessions and there are there is or are a series of songs which most of these people play and it's because the songs hit them and uh, they believe in it and they want to express, re-express that emotion. So this is uh, an important concept. And the warmongers are very, very far away from this. They are uh, psychotic by nature or psychotic by design. We don't know yet if uh, psychopathy is a genetic variant or uh, if it's something that happens to you 
based on your environment of having a dangerous and crazy parent.